we finally arrived. The final game in the .hack GU series, one that was released 10 years after the final entry in the trilogy. But is it enough to appease the fans who have been waiting for the next game, and will it breathe new life into the franchise? My name is Groudon, and I'm reviewing Steam games in alphabetical order to find the hidden gems among the piles of garbage, and today we're reviewing the final game from .hack slash slash GU last recode. .hack slash slash GU reconnection. Let's begin. It's time for our final visit to the world, and you just know that it's going to be a bittersweet experience. Set 18 months after the events of Dot .hack Redemption, Dot .hack Reconnection picks up the loose threads and aims to bring closure to the story. The general premise sees Haseo finally returning to the world to find a way to rescue the comatose Ovan, and he arrives to find that the game is on its last legs. The prior antics of Haseo and his friends have left the game so riddled with bugs and bad code that it's incredibly unstable. Many areas and aspects of the game are now inaccessible or unusable, and there are literally only days left before everything is shut down for good. So, with the clock ticking, it's up to Haseo to find and rescue Ovan before time runs out. Now, I want to say this up front. This is a great story setup, and I'm sure longtime fans of the Dot .hack series are thrilled to see the return of some of their favourite characters. And credit where credit is due, Bandai Namco managed to get the original cast of voice actors back to reprise their roles, and they all absolutely nail their performances. Additionally, because this game is stripped back and more narrative focused, everything is condensed into a 2-3 hour experience. The in-game explanation of services and features being disabled ties beautifully into the fact that there isn't any side content to be found in Reconnection. It's a very linear story focused experience, but one that also touches on story beats that are sure to please the fans. What might upset fans though is the shift from the pre-rendered CGI cutscenes to animated cutscenes. The art itself is still gorgeous, but the cutscenes play at a strangely low frame rate which can be a bit jarring. I wasn't sure I was going to like it at first, but it grew on me as the game went on. It's a stylistic choice that not everyone will approve of, but I applaud them for taking a risk. I'm not confident with the reason behind the change of style though. It could have been budget related, or as we'll see later, it could be them testing the waters for future content. For the finale of the series, they do try their best to reinvigorate the combat formula, but the results ultimately fall flat. To explain how, we need to cover a little bit of plot. Thankfully, there isn't a tournament arc this time, but there is yet another job extension for Haseo. In between the events of Redemption and Reconnection, Haseo had Scaith sealed away by Zelkova, as Scaith had grown too powerful and elements of the system were trying to suppress it, adding to the instability of the game. After finding Ovan, Haseo realised he was currently too weak to break through the ice that was encapsulating him, and sets about rescuing Zelkova from a monster that's growing in power the more the world deteriorates, Vigolta. This monstrous abomination is fought three times over the course of the game, and is the new nemesis for Haseo and friends to face. After the second encounter, Zelkova is rescued, and with the help of his sister, Kusabira, who is actually the personification of Ida, the evil AI from the original trilogy, Haseo is able to reclaim the powers of Scaith. If any of that made sense to you, congrats! If not, don't worry, just allow your eyes to glaze over a little, because thankfully that's about as complex as the plot gets. The end result is that Haseo gets his avatar powers back and some cool new drip to match. And this is a design that I love, with mechanics that I hate. The flowing black cloak with silver trim on the outside and red on the inside just looks cool, and the open torso invites both anyone with a crush or an intent to kill, because that's a massive weak spot that just screams, HIT ME HERE! Seriously though, it's great to see a return to the edgy designs that Haseo is known for, and the icing on the design cake are the tattoos covering his body. The circular patterns are a reference to the black spots of Ida, an element that is now keeping Scaith in check and maintaining the balance. The new weapon probably caught your eye, and if you're a fan of the Fire Emblem series, you may have had the same thought as me. Hey, wait, isn't that Byleth's sword from the Three Houses? Yes and no. It's a similar weapon design, but Three Houses released in 2019, so technically Dot .hack did it first. Sorry Fire Emblem fans. As mentioned earlier, this weapon is Bandai Namco's attempt at breathing new life into the combat mechanics, but ultimately it achieves little more than half-assed CPR. 
The sword replaces all of your other weapons and weapon skills and grants you access to two preset and unmodifiable trigger boards. These have four weapon skills each and each one is themed after a different avatar. Which makes thematic sense given that canonically Scathe has absorbed all seven other avatars and now houses their powers. In the previous form, Haseo could chain any weapon skill into one that uses the pistols. Now Haseo can chain any weapon skill from the first trigger board into any skill in the second trigger board. This flows really nicely, but I couldn't help but wish I could just do this using the weapons and skills that I had acquired so far instead of throwing them all away. Remember how in Redemption you could upgrade the lost weapons with virus cores? Hope you didn't spend too much time on those because they're now completely irrelevant. To be fair, this is similar to how at the start of any typical MMORPG expansion, all of the gear from the previous one becomes irrelevant very quickly. The pacing of the story felt good to play through, but for one important reason that needs to be discussed. You'll still be adventuring through areas to reach the next plot point and having catch ups with Haseo's friends in between these outings, but there's an interesting factor at play here. Assuming that you've brought over your save file from Redemption, you're likely already at max level, so there is zero, literally zero point in fighting enemies. Equip your gear with a customization that allows you to avoid battles, cast a movement increase on yourself and race through the areas. You'll thank me later. This means that rather than spending 15 to 20 minutes inching your way through an area from fight to fight, you can instead blitz through it in 1 to 2 minutes. Much better. As the plot progresses, you'll fight against the aforementioned Vigolta a total of 3 times, and each time you do, it grows stronger and stronger. This is the first and only boss fight that has a mechanic where it's shielded until the weaker enemies are killed. It's great to see some fresh mechanics added in, but Vigolta's sheer size makes the combat area feel incredibly cramped and just unfun. The third and final fight takes place after Ovan has been rescued and he and Haseo have been pulled into an outer area. This final fight is in two phases, the first as regular combat and the second in avatar form. The first phase is pretty challenging as all the monsters now use status effects of almost every kind and the lack of a dedicated healer like Atali in the party is noticeable. The window where Vigolta's barrier stays down is quite short as well, allowing for only a handful of attacks. In total, this phase of the fight took about 11 minutes and unfortunately it's a fairly repetitive 11 minutes as there are no additional mechanics that trigger as its health depletes. Vigolta then transforms into an even more hideous amalgamation of monstrosities, lore wise this is because it's absorbing all of the corrupted elements of the game to try and restore balance. In theory this isn't a bad thing, but that would also include Haseo and Ovan as they have abilities outside the intended parameters of the game. So in possibly the cringiest moment of the series so far, Haseo and Ovan combine their powers together to become a single avatar and basically just wreck this atrocity one section at a time. I may sound dismissive, but this is actually the best avatar fight in the entire trilogy in a bit, as each section has its own unique mechanic to deal with and the game doesn't give you much breathing room, relentlessly spewing masses of enemies at you. Ultimately, Haseo and Ovan are victorious and both are reunited with their friends in Makanu as the game servers approach their final hours. It's a fantastic ending and brings closure to the story of Ovan, but this means we now need to discuss the post credits content and the bonus content. Let's do this. First up, post credits content. You're able to continue playing in the final hours of the game, exploring Makanu and chatting with friends. This reveals some cutscenes between beloved characters and to the delight of many .hack fans, if you stumble into Pyros, he'll drop a hint that there may be a new game or series in the works. You can also take Ovan into a dungeon with you for a little bit of extra story and this lovely cutscene. Haseo is reminiscing about how the two of them first met with Ovan saving him from the PKers, Eoten and... uh... what was their name again? Alright, Asta! Anyway. Haseo is reminiscing about this incredibly traumatizing event that sent him into a 3 month PKK -er killing spree and what does Ovan do? Ovan points a gun at Haseo. I kid you not. Straight up points a gun at his face and then tries to laugh it off like it's just a prank bro. So that was all kinds of awful. On that fun note, we're now done with everything Reconnection has to offer so let's get into that tasty bonus content that's exclusive to Last Recode. First up is the terminal disc. This is basically a glorified cutscene viewer, allowing you to watch some plot recaps of the events of previous games. 
If you're into the lore and haven't played the original quadrilogy or watched the anime, this is a great way to get caught up on things and I appreciate that it's included here. The first entry is 17 minutes long so make sure you settle in with some popcorn because you'll be here for a while. The second piece of bonus content is called Parody Mode and I love this. They've taken cutscenes from the games and redubbed them with absolutely ridiculous lines. Here's an example of the scene from the end of Reminisce that was a touching moment between Haseo and Asali. I knew it! There's no bathroom! We gotta get out of here, Haseo! I can't hold it much longer! Don't panic, Adelie. Most people can hold it longer than they think. Let's just calm down and try to escape. <sighs> You're right. It's not like I'm a little kid. Grown-ups just don't have accidents, do they? I had an accident, and... It's... Brown. They didn't have to make these, but I'm really glad they did. It showcases a different perspective of the voice actors and shows that they likely really enjoyed working on these titles and getting to reprise their roles for the series finale. It's a love letter to their efforts and a great bit of fun for longtime series fans, and I think that's also an excellent way to describe the overall feeling of playing through Reconnection. It's time to wrap things up and put the Dot .hack series behind us. For a game that was released 10 years after the previous entry, you have to credit Bandai Namco for their efforts here. While it is ultimately a middling JRPG that still suffers from pacing issues, I mean, seriously, I strongly recommend skipping through all the combat in this game to just focus on the story, it's clear that there is a lot of love for the franchise and I applaud their efforts at attempting to iterate on the combat mechanics within the preset limitations of the original design and for wrapping up the remaining loose plot threads. Fans of the series will likely feel right at home as long as they gel with the new animation style of the cutscenes. There's nothing groundbreaking to be found here, but it is a loving homage to the series and a game made just for the fans. So, with all of that in mind, my rating for .hack slash slash GU reconnection is Ultimate Steel, Haseo's final job extension, out of 10. It's more of what fans of the series love and a homage to all the things that made .hack GU great. And finally, my overall rating for dot hack slash slash gu last recode is I'm right here out of 10. I've never played the PS2 version of the trilogy, but I can tell that this is the definitive version of it. Don't bother looking at the others because last recode is right here. Welcome to the end of the video. A massive thank you to all the channel members on screen for supporting the channel, especially our two knights of the holy grail, Freaky Feline and Loveheart Gonzi. If you'd like to become a member, you can do so for as little as a dollar per month. Just click the join button to see the available membership levels and perks. Thank you for joining me on this weird gaming adventure through the depths of Steam, and I'll see you next time in something that's not dot .hack.